Welcome to Advocacy Bootcamp 101. Hi, my name is Andrian, and let's talk advocacy. What is self-advocacy? Self-advocacy is the ability to speak up for yourself, that it will empower you through all your life journeys. That includes home, school, employment, and community. So let's go to home. Home is where everything starts, right? How can you do advocacy at home? You can approach your parents and ask them to help you to practice independence. That includes cleaning rooms, doing the dishwasher, walking the dog, and self-care. You can approach your parents by using the four eyes. I think, I feel, I want, I need. I, I want to move out from home. I think this will benefit me in the long run and the future. I, I, I feel that it is important to me to see that I can do this. I need to learn how to cook for myself. I want to challenge you to use the four eyes with your parents and friends and teach them how they can use the eyes in their lives. Great job in building those advocacy muscles. Now let's go to school. Now your second area is school. How can you do advocacy at school? So let's say you're struggling in in, in your classes and you need accommodations like Use of an iPad, a calculator, extra notes from the teacher. Where can you go to to ask for these accommodations? Well, if you go to your individualized education plan called IEP meeting. And in the meeting, there's a team of whom you can go to to ask for these accommodations. But Sometimes going to an IEP meeting can be stressful and you may have some anxiety. This is exercise called full square breathing and it will release stress and anxiety. I can model how full square breathing can work, but then you can try. So I'm going to read it through my nose, so four count. I'm going to hold it in for four count. I'm, I'm going to blow it out, four count. I'm, I'm going to hold it in for four count. Now I am now I want you to practice first grade breathing with your friends and family and teach them how they can use first square breathing in their lives. Now let's go to employment. Do I gotta give me training? Our third journey is appointments. So let's face it, we spend most of our adulthood working. How can you how can you do advocacy in in your workplace? Well you can ask you can ask for accommodations. So here's an example of how you can do advocacy in appointments. Let's say one of your tasks is to put paper in the printer. 
but the paper is in a high shelf where you cannot reach it. You can you can ask one of your colleagues to say, "Hey, I need I need to have this paper in a shelf where I can reach it." That is an example of a, of an accommodation. But to approach your colleagues, you need to think about two things. One is personal space. Personal space is a sign of self of respect for your colleagues' space and your space as well, which I like to call a bubble. And this how our bubble should work. And when you in that position, you want to make sure you have good posture. Here's an example posture that can help you. So, so let's imagine that the visible string above your head that is pulling you up and then your shoulders are back and bend your knees a little bit and pull your palms on the side of your legs This parcel would say a lot about you. Like, like um, getting people interested and engaging. This will help engaging yourself. That you are approachable, that you're an interesting person. And this parcel is empowering. Overall, employment is empowering. Not just employment, but in all areas of your life. Like community. Community is our final and fourth area. Great job in building those advocacy muscles. Several aspects that you can use advocacy in community. One of them is public transportation. Public and public transportation helps increase your independence and and, a, and another benefit is that having parents to be less involved. Not that we don't want parents to be involved. When you use public transportation, you're practicing Independence. Let's imagine you using public transportation. Some things you need to think about is the types of transportation you want to use. There is bus, Lyft, Uber, Metro. When you're on the metro, three things you need to think about. What station are you close to? Do you need to switch trains? Where's your destination? But because of COVID, we use Zoom a lot. So that means you should really initiate Zoom links. 
That means three things. Create a zoom link. Make sure everyone gets on the link. I mean, get the link. And then make sure everyone gets in. And other area in the community is to be involved in your community. That means register to vote because your voice counts and that and that it helps shape the laws and policies that affects people with disabilities. You can even go to school boards, go to awareness walks. Great job guys. Now we need the cardio now lift up those weights. Those journeys is the foundation in telling your story. You can share your personal story with elected officials, your parents, your friends. You can even go to school and talk about advocacy. You can even go to your awareness rocks and do a presentation. Now I'm going to introduce an exercise called Top 7. It is when I give someone a topic. Today will be ad advice for self advocates. And they give me seven pieces of advice. And remember, there is no one answer. Now I'm, now I'm going to ask my partner crime, Sarah who is going to model of how top seven works. The Sarah. Hi, thanks for inviting me. So top seven pieces of advice. Practice independence at home. One. Speak out at school. Two. Practice four square breathing. Three. Practice your four eyes with family and friends. Four. Take public transportation. Five. Vote whenever you can. Six. And be involved in your community. Seven. Hey Sarah, that is awesome. I can't wait how you use advocacy for your life. And please feel free to ask questions. Thank you for joining me.